the U.S. still is in a stalemate on regulation. Uh, but the optimism is there's 11 months left to an election. And no matter who wins, Democrats or Republicans, Gary Gensler is not going to be the SEC chair. Uh, you are going to get some legislation. You're going to get movement. And when, when I go to D.C., there is bipartisan agreement on you know, two pieces of legislation. It's being blocked by Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler and a few other players. Uh, but that will change. When discussing the adversaries of cryptocurrency, two prominent political figures stand out, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler and Democratic Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren. Both have been relentless in their efforts to undermine crypto through any means necessary. However, investor Mike Novogratz suggests that this upcoming November could mark a crucial turning point for the crypto landscape. In a fireside chat with iConnect Global, Novogratz shared his insights on how the current state of the crypto market has evolved and where it's headed. Bitcoin recently experienced a rally, surging by 7.5% in the last week and currently trading at $43,500. Novogratz predicts that the regulatory environment and our new leadership, potentially more crypto-friendly than Gensler, could lead to the passing of several long-awaited crypto-friendly laws that have been stagnant in Capitol Hill. Furthermore, Novogratz believes that the approval of ETFs will significantly impact price action in the crypto market by November. He suggests that now is an opportune time to invest before the anticipated next bull run. From crypto perspective, you know, we came out of uh, the Fed changing policy in, in, in 2021 and starting to hike rates aggressively. And so you would think hard assets like crypto and, and, and gold uh, would go down, and they did. What accelerated that was all the fraud and bad behavior in the space. And so you had FDX and Celsius and uh, just an embarrassment of bad, bad participants. Uh, and so crypto is built on trust and we lost a lot of trust. And so you had what's a classic market capitulation. Everybody hated it. You couldn't sell enough. Everyone deleveraged. No one's ever going to touch it again. And so when there's complete blood on the streets in markets, it's when you're supposed to come in and buy. It's very scary. Uh, you might look like an idiot, uh, but that's when the greatest buying opportunities were. So Bitcoin at 18, 17,000, you know, with hindsight was a great buying opportunity. So what switched? How did we go from all those headwinds to tailwinds? First, the Fed got closer to finishing their rate hike cycle, right? They're hiking, they're hiking, they're hiking. They're not going to hike forever. And so you could sense and then see the pause, and now we're going to start the rate cutting cycle. And so that was the macro tailwind. Um, you had a weird combination of good things happen, right? Grayscale, which was this big closed-end fund full of Bitcoin, uh, sued the SEC and said, this is unfair, you won't let an ETF happen. And they won. The reason we have an ETF is not because Gary Gensler decided, I really love crypto now or the, the Biden administration, is because they lost in the courts. Uh, we have three parts of government, and thank God for the courts in terms of the crypto industry. And so all of a sudden we're going to get an ETF. Larry Fink, one of the most influential asset managers in history, came out and said, hey, this thing called Bitcoin, I know I used to think it didn't serve a purpose, but it's pretty important. And so the fact that Larry Fink got orange-pilled, monstrously important. Right, because it represented institutional investors everywhere. Uh, there are lots of different players, but he, he holds a unique post as the head of the largest asset manager in the world. Um, and all of a sudden, crypto's always been about a macro story and adoption. You could start sensing, oh, my adoption is going to come. And so people start front running that. Uh, we also cleared up FTX, I'm sorry, Binance. Right, the biggest crypto exchange in the world is Binance. There were all this worry: is the money there? CZ, CZ settled with the with the government for some KYC fines, paid a huge fine, and stepped down. And so, the risk around Binance, the biggest player, went from here to here. Right. So now it's an exchange. It's still the largest exchange, but no one thinks, oh, it's going to get shut down in a week. No one thinks they don't have the money. It's just a, an offshore player. And so we took a lot of the, the tail rests away and put, a, and put a tailwind together. And so when I look at crypto now, when I look at the whole industry, I'm like, hmm, we're going to get regulation in the next 12 to 18 months. We're going to have the Fed cutting rates. And we've got this new 
vehicle of adoption that is just getting started, right? The ETF is two weeks old. Usually ETFs get announced and they don't start trading for six to seven weeks. So they give the sales forces a ton of time to be able to go make their phone calls. In this case, because of the grayscale thing, they had one day. And so if you're the Invesco sales force, you haven't even started making your calls or BlackRock or now we've got nine big sales forces, huge sales forces that are selling Bitcoin. And that's a big, big deal. I think you're going to see this institutional creep. It's going to start with the RAAs. Uh, but listen, adoption always happens in a relatively similar way. Uh, you already have some early, you know, early movers in the, in the pension, pension world, uh, in, the, in the endowment world. Now I can say, I'm not going to get fired. It's not that complex. It's, it's just like a stock. And you're going to see some of those guys move in. And then they're going to say, well, what's next? The Ethereum ETF is coming, so maybe I should be part of that ecosystem. Hey, once we realize, and I think one of the most important things of this ETF is there is an inevitability that crypto is going to be part of the financial landscape. We are going to get legislation done in the next 18 months. You can talk to Hakeem Jeffries. You can talk to... Tom Emmer on the other side, Republican and Democrat, they will tell you we're going to get legislation done. And so once this inevitability happens, it just makes it easier for other people to invest. And we're seeing that already. We're seeing that in our asset management business raising more capital. We're seeing that in signing up more clients to trade with us. Uh, it's not like a gold rush to, you know, everyone's running like mania like we had in 17 and 21, but it's better for the long run that we have this slow move of the herd. And so it would be surprising to me if the crypto business wasn't a lot bigger in two years than it was today.